All right, so uh, I get multiple inquiries on Edison storage batteries and Junger uh, storage batteries, and so um, you guys got to understand, you got a lot of reading to do, okay? You can't just buy these and then expect to know uh, from a couple questions all the different things. Uh, the best uh, equivalent I could tell you is imagine buying an old uh, airplane or something. You would want to know all about it and be able to inspect it and maintain it and everything. Make sure it was up to par before you want to get in the thing and take off. It's kind of like that. So uh, because of copyright issues and stuff, I can't tell you what my newer older books have but this is a book that's super old it's out of copyright and what I'm gonna do is go through it and you can get all the information you need and this is uh, one of the oldest and one of the best resources it's got everything uh, they could pro probably want to know and some things you didn't know you should know and that's all I can do for you because I can't be uh, going through my modern books that are still in copyright and give you the information. And you should know better. I'm, I've made multiple videos on the books you should know and learn from. And if you're not going to sit down and read and learn on your own, um, you you shouldn't buy an old, old airplane and then take off in it and you also shouldn't get a hold of these batteries because um, it takes a lot of study and commitment and it's it's very expensive so uh, this is what I can do for you and it's right here all the information you could want uh, beginner to intermediate to to advanced levels here so uh, there you go. I've got multiple inquiries from one gentleman. He got some uh, batteries at auction and he expects me to walk him through the whole process and uh, this is me walking you through the whole process. You can read these pages here. Okay, if you can't afford if you can afford these batteries but can't afford how, how to use them the knowledge. Uh, that's like buying an old airplane and and you can't afford to take off in it and um, it's just a it's just a bad recipe so anyway let's go through this and uh, hopefully this will save me a lot of uh, in, in you a lot of pain uh, this book is is no longer on the market I can't find it anywhere I think there's a copy somewhere uh, on the internet as a PDF but I haven't been able to find it lately so it's out of copyright so let's go through it uh, it's uh, alkaline accumulators by uh, Cronell and Lee and uh, I think this is one of the most fantastic books and it's also the only one I can show you the rest are still in copyright as far as I know so this is a uh, it came from uh, the Royal College Military College of Science uh, library is uh, oh, I bought it, uh, and it and then it was shipped to me from Switzerland. So maybe these these book dealers they grab all these discontinued libraries and then uh, resell them. So um, as far as I know, well I looked up this place and it was it was uh absorbed in other organizations and things so it doesn't it doesn't really exist in the format it was in let's go through it oh great stay in focus please I got all the lighting okay so we're just gonna go through it page by page get as far as we can get and when you need to read something you need to pause it pause the video and uh, I might chat a little bit along the way but this is the information you need to know from the get-go. And it's, and it's 
uh, the right the writers uh, they didn't have any uh, um, bias per se. They uh, they went through all the different uh, manufacturers at that time and got the information they could, and they went to experts and things like that. And so this this is a really unbiased. Uh, it's a really unbiased um, uh, account. I need to go faster. And uh, it's it's done a, a very high quality of uh, inquiry. And uh, it's it's hard getting all this information in one spot. Trust me. Uh, I've got different manuals and different things like that, but uh, as far as getting like a full book on this subject, it's really hard. So, hope this helps a lot of folks, especially the ones that keep asking me for information, and I get I, I'm getting exasperated by it. Especially the people, like, they think that, um, they think that, uh, they can just buy something and then, and then take off in it. Kind of like buying an old airplane and then taking off in it. I, be, I guess you could, but it's dangerous, you know, um. I guess you could. Sorry, that that goes way into the crevice, the crevasse there, and so uh, you can just kind of figure out what it was. Um, there's some info in here that you don't find anywhere else. Uh, uh, then, as now, there's a lot of imitators and. Uh, And a lot of companies that didn't that didn't do so well. That they did as Edison and Younger, and they, um, and they, they either got bought out or went out of business or got rolled up in some other company. Um, and this book is really good because it kind of explains the Edison Younger. Um, a history a little bit um, and and as I've tried to, to show on my channel the uh, the uh, there's a few things that you should know if you didn't know already so there, there's nickel iron and there's nickel cadmium Okay, it's basically like Ford Chevy almost like or Pepsi and and Coca-Cola. Uh, they uh they're very similar uh but they have variations. And uh The, the thing is, the different manufacturers, uh, they confuse things a lot. There, there's, there's a few factors, and I'll, I'll go over a few factors as I'm trying to go through this book here. I think I have like 20 gigs to play with, or about 15 to 20 gigs, so hopefully I can get this whole book in here before this video craps out, because... Um, so anyway... So, Knifey was Junger's uh, company, and uh, Junger of, of uh, Sweden, he uh, played around with nickel iron batteries, uh, but he, he went to, he opted for nickel cadmium. 
but his original uh, configuration was nickel iron and uh, the periodic table Ni is nickel and Fe is iron so you put them together and you get NIFE knife or nif or knifey um, and so he kept he kept the the knifey NIFE uh, trademark but the the actual batteries were nickel nickel cadmium or, or NICAD and so that's the first point of confusion uh, another confusion point is um, uh, what do you call you have nickel iron batteries uh, which are technically nickel iron but um, you also have NIFE batteries which are technically nickel cadmium and NIFE is just a trademark and NIFE uh, it's a lot of different things. I even saw some binoculars, a picture of binoculars that said NIFE on them. So it's a lot. It's a consumer product brand, or at least it had been. And then you had the the two uh, world wars and things confusing stuff. Um, and what else? What are the things? So I. Uh, The the later the after all all the years and decades gone by, uh, the Edison brand, uh, Ed, uh, Edison, E D I S O N, uh, it became a brand for nickel cadmium batteries. So. You'll have some nickel cadmium batteries that say Edison on them, uh, even though the original uh, Edison nickel iron batteries had nothing to do with cadmium. Uh, so that's another confusion point. So, so not only do you got NIFE batteries that are nickel cadmium, but you got Edison batteries which are nickel cadmium. But Edison, as far as storage batteries, uh, he was all about the nickel iron. So that's really confusing um, to try. To, and I, what I want to do is have like a some way of I did like having a, a master archive of, of all the different configurations, so people can look at it and know what they're dealing with. Because there's a lot of confusion. Oops, change my grip on this thing so we're about halfway through I think 65 so, so hopefully you're getting the info you need um, this is a really good book and I'm basically making it because on the one hand I want to help folks but on the other hand there's a lot of folks and uh, The, the thing with batteries, uh, I might as well just talk about what I got to fill this conversation in with something. So as far as YouTube and battery uh, education and stuff, the, there's, there's, a, there's a couple couple few big names. Uh, what, one is Jehu Garcia. He's a do-it-yourself uh, battery maverick and uh i really uh respect the man for just doing getting getting out there and, and doing things and finding things out and he's built he's built on that built on his brand and things and the other one is uh uh will prouse but uh he he made some books, and he is a DIYer, 
and he has his channel and he has his brand and things very successful both of them from the looks of it um but that's probably the way you want to go with modern modern day uh batteries is the 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 the, the lithium batteries there's there's different lithium batteries uh I think the LIFE uh, PO are the safe ones, safer, or they won't. Uh, they're more forgiving. And then the lithium ion batteries, those are the ones if if the case is damaged or something, they can uh, catch fire. And there's a bunch of other ones. Uh, but anyway, I had um, somewhat of a of a, I guess you call it, a, a imagination that, oh, well, maybe I could be the famous guy with Edison batteries, but I'll never be able to because uh, the modern day uh, equivalents of, of these batteries are very expensive. I mean, the and most people can't afford the price and then when you look at the maintenance requirements um, you've got to be able to provide pure distilled water uh, and there's a bunch of it's just it's like uh, a high maintenance um, poodle or something you know you got to clip its nails and, and a bunch of other things and it, it's it's aggravating and so for the the casual user of modern day conveniences and things like that it's way too much work um, unless you're really committed and uh, these folks that don't want to read they're not they're they're not committed maybe they can't read maybe they don't know how to read English or um, something like that, I guess. But find a friend to help you. I got I got to change my hand here. Right Let's get back to this. Okay. Did we get this page. These pages. I got a whole on here. Readjust. All right. I'm good for a little bit. So um, the guy that really got me interested in. in Edison batteries. Uh, he he has a YouTube channel called um, Hillbilly Homestead, and he actually had nickel cadmium batteries. And that, but but overall, um, as far as questions about the electrolyte, oh, and uh, it's, it's I think Hillbilly Homestead he got rid of them. He, sold them or something because um and there's another guy that was had a bunch of nickel cadmium batteries uh oh what's his name um uh, anyway he, has a, he did a lot of videos on the the chinese uh ones versus the old as nickel cadmium he tried to fix up a few test them out what was this channel like solar power and electronics or, um, rants I think it's ransom the problem with folks is they have these weird names like even my channel it's military industrial museum most people don't even know how to spell museum um, so if you ever start a YouTube channel, try to get an easy name. Because uh, I'll tell you, these odd names and stuff, people don't. I mean, unless. I mean, it's hard to remember, like in casual conversation. A word of mouth is a major uh, way to get um, some exposure. So, anyway, there's, there's a bunch of different folks that have done a bunch of different batteries. Um, me, I'm battery agnostic. 
I want to know, uh, which means I don't have a, I don't have a favorite. I want to learn all the different chemistries, and uh, different batteries are good for different applications. It's just they're just tools, you know. They deliver uh, volts where you need them to go, and some can do some volts uh, a little bit. Some can do a lot. Some can do it over and over, some can do it once. And so it's basically, basically you got to figure out what you want. So what am I running now? Uh, I have a big bank of uh, lead acid batteries at, at uh, the 20, 24 volts. And uh, that'll last me for a little bit as I try to get my nickel irons online and my nickel canyons. Uh, I got a huge lot of them. Uh, it was basically a guy just wanting to get rid of them. Some are looking good, some are not so good. And um, the problem with me, though, I, I don't have a lot of time. I don't have a lot of time to deal with with all this stuff. I was hoping my channel would get popular and I could I could go full time YouTuber, but my channel has not gotten popular. And when I find out that uh, you got to, like, trigger people and hitting the like button and subscribing and commenting and all that, and I just, you know, I understand, like, okay, this is what you do to get ahead, but I just, I just feel aggravated thinking that I have to keep goading people, hey, you know, because I, uh, all I will tell you is if you like YouTube, and you're using it a lot, get yourself a premium subscription because the ads they've got they've gotten so hectic that I my attention span is just corrupted. I I had to get the premium service just so I could like concentrate on things. Um so I recommend you do. So that's the end of it. Wow. So we made it. So we're twenty two twenty two and I think, oops, losing my grip here. I think we're done here. So that should answer your question as as far as all the different components. And um, I hope this helps you out. And uh, I, th I almost don't think it will, it will. Because I've already provided a lot of advice that you need to be buying these old books and reading them. But this is the oldest book I have. It's out of copyright. It should be no issue. But it's going to give you the basic understanding you need. The specific question I had was how do I... Uh, the guy bought uh, some nickel cadmium batteries made by... Uh, uh, I forget... Yet. But um, he's like, so how do I make the electrolyte? I'm like, well, you should read the books. And I even gave him the links and stuff. But he didn't read the book. He wants to know how to... It's like, dude, if you want to make some cookies, go get a cookie recipe. And if I show you where to get it, and you don't get it, and you keep asking me, it's like, dude... So now, here's the cookie recipe, okay? I'll show you in here. Look. Uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? I'm trying to read and, and hand the, handle the camera. and. Okay, so... This was, a, if if you're re looking at this video, on page 101, the electrolyte composition. It also talks about the lithia component. That's a, it's another major uh, point of inquiry for folks. Because if you think about it, if you go to 101, it, it may be so that Edison more or less invented the lithium battery because he's the one 
or here, the effect of lithium. It's lithium. So he's the one that under that found out. Tom Edison found out that the lithium increases the uh, charge capacity. Yeah, charge voltage. Um, Um, Edison, on the other hand, it states that in the charge cell, the lithium is in some obscure combination at the positive plate, and, it, and on discharge, the combination it is broken up and lithium released. Um, in the Edison cell, more lithium is added initially than is required for a saturated solution, and the excess is usually sufficient to maintain the capacity for about a year. After this, the electrolyte should be renewed, and details of the renew, renew, renewal electrolytes have already been given on page 69. So that's the other thing. Um, so, uh oh, got an alarm going off. Hold up. So, uh, just just in, in in layman's terms, even more layman than this layman book is, nickel iron batteries had an exciter called uh, mercury, and it's another reason why the modern ones don't have mercury. But the modern ones do have cadmium. Cadmium is the equivalent exciter. And so, uh, what, what I'm trying to get at is you can use uh, distilled water and potassium hydroxide by itself. Uh, but Edison recommended that you add, add the lithium. Well, he actually didn't recommend that you add. He wanted to make all the electrolyte. You need to sell the electrolyte, and you weren't supposed to make your own. But since he doesn't exist anymore, nor it's company and, and, and things, you got to recreate things. Um, so what was I trying to tell? So this guy that's got these cadmium batteries, uh, I would say you could use the distilled water and the um, potassium hydroxide. Uh, a lot of folks have said that the, the lithium for the nickel cadmium batteries, it's, it's, uh, it's just uh, icing on the cake. You, don't, you, don't, you, you can still have your cake and eat it too. You don't necessarily need the icing. With the nickel iron batteries, it's probably something you should probably do. Because some it, it extends the life and charge span of the, the whole thing, but a lot of folks have said that you just need the potassium hydroxide and the and the and the uh, distilled water. A lot of that came from Hillbilly Homestead. You should check out his channel for some more uh, nickel cadmium uh, information for sure. And uh, same for. Uh, you should, anyway, go just put put in put in the put it in on YouTube. All these books will come up. A lot of them aren't active anymore so much, but they left their videos and things. So, um, but yeah, I hope this helps. I'm not being, uh, I'm not trying to be mean or anything, um, but. Uh, But yeah, so um, I'm just concerned. Like, if if you bought a, a old airplane and want to go flying it without knowing everything about it and inspecting it, and understanding it, you're you're gonna you're gonna be in trouble. Some some and and some airplanes after they're old too old, you don't want to fly them. There's no way to fix them. And same for these batteries. Um, so. I think I said all I can. I've given you information. 
you need to just pause it on the page and read it. That's that, I'm basically spoon feeding you. Uh, so hope this helps. All right, thanks so much. If you want, you can subscribe and like and all that. And, but I'm I'm pretty sure this channel is is too boutique to uh, to uh, ever get real big. I mean, unless I branch out into uh, more typical modern day batteries. All right, enough of me.